second board is raised then. It's going to be a 15-minute race. The red lights go on. Out they go. The race gets underway. Who's it going to be from pole position? It looks like Sean Schreiner has just marginally got the better start there, and he's going to lead into Old Hall Corner from Aaron Cook in second place. But everyone else is trying to be third as they turn their way through. Are they all going to get through Old Hall Corner safely? There's one or two being sort of spat back onto the circuit, having run off on wide Old Hall. But actually, that was more well-disciplined than I thought it might be. On board with Maxine Nichols right in the mid-pack. It's very busy. There's a car off wide. Is that Paul Hinson, former champion, off on the right-hand side of shot? There he is. Yeah, it was Paul Hinson. Uh, he's back on, though, but much further down the order than he would like. It was number 16, Daniel Farmer, who made his way into the pits. He's back out again. But here's Trainer and Cook. I think Sam Harper's up to third. That was an awesome start from six. He's the best of the Mark IIs uh, there for. But leading the race is Sean Trainer from Cook. Then it's Harper, then Walton. Then in fifth place, Adam Lockwood. So there was good starts, a bit further down the order there, and making progress pretty quickly. Uh, and there's a car, I'm afraid, in the gravel. And that is the number 74 car, David Mustard, but he is going to get back into the race right at the back of the field. So it's Sean Trainer doing everything he can to try and stop Aaron Cook winning the championship. But if Aaron Cook stays there, that's still going to be enough for him, sitting there in second position. Third is Harper. Fourth and fifth and sixth all together. There's a bit of a gap further back, so something's gone on in the middle, I think, to divide the pack. That's possibly where Paul Hinson disappeared, isn't it, early on? I can still see yellow flags waving on the exit of Cascade, so possibly there's someone off a little bit further around the corner, which we can't see at the moment. Oh, yeah, I just saw the, yeah, the car parked up, I think, perhaps uh, on the left-hand side of the track, just caught a quick glimpse of that. There's Nick Williamson returning this weekend. He leads a whole gaggle of cars, which includes Paul Hinson, who's gaining places. He goes up the inside of 13, which is Rice Dormant. So he gains one of those places back at Druids. And for fourth, a change because Adam Lockwood dives up the inside of Cam Walton and goes through. So the best of the Mark IIs is now fifth. Don't think we've seen this many Mark III's at the front before. We've got five in the top six. Yeah, it's very competitive. And Aaron Cook right with the race leader, Sean Trainer there. Then you've got the... Uh, first of the Mark IIs, which is Sam Harper in third, but he's a distant back. The two leaders are pretty much side by side as they go down towards Cascades, and it looks like Sean Trainer has lost the lead to Aaron Cook down there. They're still side by side as they go through the left-hander, absolutely nose to nose, and Sean Trainer, I think, is just about going to hang on after all of that. You can see they pass one park car at the exit of Cascades, but there's Aaron Cook looking over to his left-hand side, see where Sean Trainer is. Is Sean Trainer there on his left-hand side? Yes, he is for the left-hander, and Sean Trainer does hang on through the left hander island great battle this is we've seen a lot of it this season there's good respect generally between these two don't think we've really seen anything actually happen between them and we didn't there i thought it was going to get a bit tight but aaron cooks backed out of it. he did say to me yesterday he wouldn't do anything silly and perhaps that was part of that going into the shallows hairpin not diving up the inside into the breton chicane going over the curb again aaron cook looks pretty leisurely at the wheel very relaxed isn't it it's remarkable uh, considering he's uh, there in second place battling for the win gunning for the championship but it's like it's a a Saturday morning, it still is, drive around Dalton Park, but it's uh, Sean Trainer leading, Aaron Cook second. They're getting a long way back from the next group of cars. You've got uh, Sam Harper and now Cam Walton up to fourth. Sam Harper's never finished on the podium in an MR2 race before, I don't think, so he's trying to do that. Yep, they're in third place, and great battles. More Mark III, there's so many of them, isn't there, this season? Uh, and Dave Hemingway, the best of the Mark one locks up. He's side by side with Maxine Nichols and goes through ahead then um, of Maxine Nichols. And one gone down the escape road, that's 19, which was uh, Cameron Bell. So here's the battle for the lead of Class B then. That's Sam Harper against the Class B champion for this season, uh, Cam Walton. But you can see how far back they are from behind the roads. It looked like Cam was about to try and make a move up on the inside of Sam. And we didn't see the end of that because we're watching the, quite rightly, the battle for the lead going on as well between Sean Trainer and uh, Sean uh, Aaron Cook. But it did look like we had the change with Cam Walton, yes, going through. And Adam Lockwood trying to follow him at Old Hall Corner as well to get up into fourth position ahead of Sam Harper. Yeah, it was all very busy there for third place. You can see them turn their way out of Old Hall. It's pretty busy for the lead as well, getting very twitchy there with Aaron Cook right on the bumper of the race leader, Sean Trainer, as they turn their way there. 
um, on to Lakeside and down towards Island Bend. And Aaron Cook is alongside, so we've got a good exit there to uh, two Cascades and into Island. Is he going to go through this time? On the inside line, he does. Can try and hang on on the outside, he can't. So Aaron Cook, therefore, has taken the lead of the race. By the way, on that first lap, we were, I think, two seconds under the lap record from a decade or so ago. Yes, uh, another relatively ancient lap record with the MR2s not having raced this uh, layout very regularly. Ben Rowe is up to four, mm. so he's progressing well. He was sixth at the start of the lap. He started eight, so this is turning into quite a good race for him. So the Mark II's are starting to move forwards again now, aren't they? Um, after not a, perhaps a great start for some of them. Yeah, and he held the Class A lap record, didn't he, come into this weekend as well for the, uh, for the Mark 1s, did Ben Rowe. Uh, it's now been uh, taken away, I should think. Yeah, by seven seconds by <laughs> Dave Hemingway. As we watch this uh, battle on there, is Ben Rowe, number two. He's just ahead of Adam Lockwood. Sam Harper, the driver, has dropped back down to sixth. Then Peter Higton is seventh. Nick Williamson, number 22, is eighth. And Darren Old is ninth. And there's a gap back then to the 10th place almost kind of at the moment. I think that's 24, Daniel Sylvester, the YouTuber, that's there in 10th uh, position. Leaders had gone through shot, still with uh, Cook ahead of Trainer. There we get a good view of Rowe all the way up from Devon. Trainer trying to fight back here. He's going to the outside line for Lodge Corner, though. Deeper into the corner he goes. Yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> I thought he might try and get the switch back on the exit of the corner, but uh, no, he got that a little bit wrong on the brakes, I think. And talking of getting it wrong, that's number 20. That's Patrick Stoner. Yeah, for a trade, he could hear the tyre squeal, couldn't you? So I think the tyres had given up on him there. But he didn't really lose too much time to Aaron Cook. There in third is Cam Walton. Fourth is Ben uh, Rowe. Then in fifth place, Lockwood. Sixth is Stan Harper. So he lost out in all of that. Peter Higton is there in seventh. Ahead uh, of Nick Williamson, Darren Aldworth and Neil Stratton completes the top ten after three laps. Yeah, so we are eight and a bit minutes left in this race. We're getting up towards the halfway point of this 15-minute uh, contest. There is Nick Williamson then just behind Peter Higton. This is the fight for seventh and eighth positions and uh, Nick there tries to make a move at Island Bend. It'll be on, put him on the outside line though for the left hand and yeah, it comes to nothing as I, I thought it might do. And Neil Stratton it is that's now made his way up into the top 10 in car number 84. You can see his yellow roadster in the background of that shot. I think he's gaining on this group as well. So he's very much one to watch as this race goes on. He started fifth, but uh, his progress, or well, after falling away, he's progressing again back forward, as you've been saying. And Paul Cook and Paul Hinson are behind him. So Paul Hinson's come back through nicely, hasn't he? And he's lapping as quickly as the third place battle is. So Paul Hinson is quick after he's off uh, towards the start of the race. And he's just at the back uh, of this train of cars, the 2012 MR2 champion. There's Darren Aldworth in car number six. He's had quite a decent season. He's sixth in the championship coming here to the final meeting uh, of the year. And they turn their way out of Nickerbrook. They can see Paul Cook trying to catch this group. And Paul Hinton sort of dropped away again after saying how well he'd been going. Yeah, so we'll see if he can uh, come back into uh, contention as the race goes on. Seven minutes left to go. There's Stratton in the number 84 roadster. He's one driver that has over time converted to a, a roadster. He previously raced a, a Mark 1. Uh, there's a few drivers that have made that switch straight from a Mark 1 to a Mark 3 within the Toyota Tri to MR2 Championship. And they uh, drop down out of uh, uh, Lodge Corner, climb dearly and complete another lap. That is uh, Four laps now in the book, with uh, six and a half minutes left to go in this race. It is Aaron Cook leading by half a second from Sean Trainer, 96 from 27. Cam Walton third in car 50. He's now 1.3 seconds clear of Ben Rowe. So relatively comfortable by the standards of this race in third place. Aaron Cook fastest lap to 0.249. It's the first time at any Mark III roadsters have raced on this layout, which shows you how long ago um, it was the last time the MR2 Championship was here. As they turn their way through Island Bend, there is Adam Lockwood, who's chasing Ben Road. Did ben Road lock up a little bit there into shallow oils, possibly, but uh, he still sits there in fourth place overall. Then you've got this massive battle pack uh, behind, headed by the quick start in Sam Harper, who is there in sixth and no more, though, is he? Because Peter Higton, who's, who's got ahead of him, and Paul Cook at the back of the queue, has got ahead of Neil Stratton. So a couple of changes there for at the start of lap five as we move into the second half 
of this uh, race for the MR2 Championship. Here comes Darren Aldrup in six, trying to challenge 22. Nick Williamson into the Hislop chicane. And now they're both with Sam Harper, who started so well, but uh, he sort of had a lot of this race watching his mirrors with other drivers trying to pass him. Yeah, of course, he went from sixth to third, didn't he, at the start? And possibly there was a maybe a little bit out of position in the early laps, and there's just gradually assumed his more more natural pace as the, the race has gone on in this this one. He just looks to have the rear bumper of his car just flapping a little bit in the breeze like there's been some contact at an earlier point in the race which has dislodged that. But yeah, you can just get a view of that as you watch the rear of that car disappear up towards Lodge. Now here is uh, Paul Cook that is trying to find, forge his way through. He's now got ahead of Neil Stratton and up into the top 10. That's in the little yellow and, and grey Mark II car right behind now number six, Darren Aldra. Uh, and Sean Trainer's now set the fastest lap of the race, throw 2.16. So he's going back after Aaron Cook again after being passed a couple of laps ago. There's Neil Stratton in 84 in this big battle pack that heads its way down the avenue through Denton's and onto Cascades. Paul Cook's been trying to find a way past Darren Aldrich for the last few corners, but is unable to do so uh, so far. Behind them all, Paul Hinson uh, is now lapping as quickly as Cam Walton in third, which is going to put him on a good grid position for the race later on, which is set by fastest laps from this race. But at the moment, Higton, oh, sorry, H uh, Hinson is still there in 12th. No, no, he's not. He's up to 11th because into uh, Island Bend, he went up the inside of Neil Stratton. Meanwhile, a bit further up the road, Nick Williams is trying to squeeze up his way up. By uh, past Sam Harper, but can't do it. There's Stratton, who again is starting to fall down some positions, isn't he? And Nappy's on the grass, which isn't going to help his case um, as he fights his way um, onto the circuit again, up towards the Britain chicane for lap number six of this 15 minute race. Well, it's a long old train of cars that he's a part of, isn't it, as well? And it's sort of headed by uh, Sam Harper. There's sort of five cars in that group. Harper is about to be passed by Williamson, who's later on the brakes. He almost outbraked himself, though, but actually he did manage to squeeze through ahead there of Sam Harper. So he now goes up into seventh place, does Nick Williamson. And uh, it's a mighty old queue, six of them, in fact, right behind him. Sam Harper's fighting back as they go up Clay Hill. Williamson's line, I think, was a bit awkward into Nick Brook, and therefore he's slower off the corner. And he may lose a number of positions here because they're all trying to pass him into Druid. Up the inside is Harper. Paul Cook comes up the inside of Aldworth. And up over the curbs is Paul Hinson. I don't think I've seen a car on two wheels through Druid before. It's kind of worked for him, though, because he's passing Aldworth. He's trying to pass Cook as well as they come down towards Lodge. Sam Harper's held on to the lead of this battle pack. And there's Hinson still up alongside. They were three wide. They've all just... Oh, no, they've all made contact now. And on the grass is Paul Hinson going up Deer's Leap. He made contact there with Paul Cook. Um, so <laughs> they come across the line. So Hinton's lost all those positions he gained. Daniel Sylvester's right in the middle of all of this. So he's gaining positions now, or trying to at least. And we've kind of, I think, Ian, just about got away with all of that. Seems that way, doesn't it? As they drop down out of Old Hall towards Cascades. A big shake up then in this uh, sort of sixth to 12th pack. There's Sylvester, the red car, up on the inside of number 84. Neil Stratton, yet yeah, he's made that move uh, stick. So he's the big gainer in all of yeah, that. So he was sort of right place at the right time, wasn't he? Uh, Harper and Williamson have got away um, because, well, they sort of sort of started it by slowing each other up at Nickerbrook, didn't they? Yeah. Uh, but then it all went crazy behind them, really. Uh, Paul Cook is ahead of Darren Aldrich, so that was a change. But then Daniel Sylvester ahead of Paul Hinton, who looked like he was running very wide. Uh, yeah, he's on the grass again, and he's losing a position to Neil Stratton and possibly to Lee Brown as they go side by side down into Britain's, which generally doesn't work. So Hinton breaks desperately late, hops over the curbs again. I think he's finding as much of Alton Park as possible, isn't he, in this race, Paul Hinson? Right, so down towards his lops goes Sam Harper, but let's have a look a little bit further back. Lee Brown there, as you say, is involved now with 25, Paul Hinson. You've got Sylvester and Stratton in the two roads, the red and yellow car. John McCullough battle going through just ahead of them. Cook, and Cook's got a good run here, Ian, on Nick Williamson. So he's quickly caught him, hasn't he? And he's going past. So Paul Cook, who had that touch with Paul Hinson is the one that's gaining positions again and he's now going to be the one to try and find a way past Sam Harper who's had been doing a great job at holding them all off but he's spinning and he's going to just touch the rectocell barrier he should be able to continue don't know if there was a touch there or not but uh, 
after what had been a good defensive drive, really, for Sam Harper. He wouldn't have done anything wrong. It ended up off the road. Meanwhile, the leaders have gone on to the last lap. Aaron Cook's lead over Sean Trainer now extended to 1.61 seconds. It's 96 from 27. They're about 10 seconds clear of Cam Walton, number 50 in third place, two Ben Rowe, fourth. Uh, and Rowan Lockwood are right together, two and 11, fourth and fifth, and then it's Peter Higgins sixth. And then you've got this little battle. <laughs> little battle, is it? Headed <laughs> <laughs> now by Paul Cook, who you'd think might have the pace just to spread everyone else uh, out a bit. But here is the lead gap, and it's massive all of a sudden, isn't it, between Cook and Train? Because Aaron Cook has gone quicker than anybody went in qualifying. He's done a two minutes, 1.63. So that's a really good effort uh, from... Um, Aaron Cook, I think the lap record was a 2.06 uh, coming here, so that's four and a half seconds quicker than what um, Mark Jessup did uh, back in the day, the early days of the MR2 Championship, a championship that's grown and grown, hasn't it? Been pretty much at capacity or above capacity all season, but generally the driver that's been at the front, as he is here, is Aaron Cook, who one-handed turns his way through the Hislops and into Nickerbrook. Yeah, why well, use two hands when one will do? Out of uh, Nickerbrook he goes. He'll climb up Clay Hill for the final time. He's set here for his eighth victory of the uh, 2021 season. In a 16-round championship, this round 15 of it, you can see he has, over the last lap or two, put quite a bit of daylight between himself and Sean Trainer, his championship rival. I think a fourth-place finish in this race would have been enough for Aaron to, uh, to wrap up the championship with a race to spare. Well, he's gone a little bit better than that. He's, after a very entertaining early few laps, he's gone on to dominate this race in the last quarter of it, really. Out of Dearly, under the pedestrian bridge, up to the lines, take the chequered flag and win at round 15 of the Toyo 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 MRT Championship and indeed the championship title as well. So that's back-to-back -back championships are making history, being the first car C driver to win the championship overall. So congratulations to Aaron Cook. He's uh, been hard to beat over the season. Sean Train has done it a few times and taken the championship to the last meeting. But uh, Aaron Cook, absolutely the star of the year. Uh, for third, Cam Walton had beaten Ben Rowe. Adam Lockwood was fifth. Peter Higton was sixth. And then the big paddle pack behind uh, is headed by Paul Cook from Nick Williamson, Darren Aldworth, Daniel Sylvester, Paul Hinson, Neil Stratton, Lee Brown, Jim Muse. That was, what, eight uh, cars in that battle at the end. Uh, a bit further behind that Rice, uh, Reese Dorman who takes 15th. He had a lonely race compared to those in front. Then Sam Harper, who I'm sure will be disappointed with how that ended up. Then the uh, rest of them come up across the line, but showing you in that wherever your pace is in the MR2 Championship, you will find somebody to race with, with such a big grid well, and such a competitive field as well. Yeah, around 40 cars on the grid, you, you're bound to find someone around about your own pace and certainly sort of sixth back to 12th. That was a particularly tight knot of cars, <laughs> very entertaining scrap that we had, few little incidents in it as well. Good drive there from Ben Row to eighth up to fourth position there using all of his experience. Paul Cook from 12th up to seventh. Another driver sort of on the move during that race. And Paul Cook in the end set the third fastest lap of the race which will give him a good grid position for later on. And he wasn't that much lower than Cook and Trainer. So whether he can take it to those two Class C drivers uh, in the final round of the year we're yet to see. And there's more battles aren't there still to take the flag. Uh, headed there by car number 70 which is Stuart Brearley. So that's a battle well, outside the top 30, uh, but they're coming up across the line. So I think everyone's going to finish the race, bar Daniel Farmer, who had that problem right at the start. Yeah, so. and, and Class A being won by Nathan Harrison today right. from, uh, from Dave Hemingway, uh, with the Class A champion Gareth Baxter back in third place within that class today. That's good stuff from Nathan Harrison, isn't it? I think he won a race before. That was one of the split races. So he'll be really pleased to beat Dave Hemingway in all of that. We didn't see how that one ended up. It ended up two hundredths of a second apart at the flag. So it was a, an entertaining battle. And it was sort of hard to take our, our eyes off the... Uh, the cars a bit further up the overall order, but it shows Indeed. you even those older Class A cars have absolutely got a place in the championship. They've sort of grown, haven't they, in the championship over the last few years and showing here at Alton Park that uh, if you've got one of those original MR2s, it's a great place to race it. Absolutely right, but uh, really all attention after that race is going to be on Aaron Cook, having wrapped up the, uh, the championship, retained his championship, heading uh, into Park Ferme. We'll hear from him. Uh, very shortly, but he's really impressed since uh, arriving in the MR2 Championship and the 750 Motor Club paddock since uh, sort of switching from, uh, from short ovals, which is where he's learnt uh, a lot of his racecraft, no doubt. 
and uh, he's transferred very successfully to the circuits, as a number of other drivers have done in the past as well. So in the background, you see the cars heading into, uh, into Park Ferme at the end of that race. There'll be uh, the chance to hear from our top three. There'll be some scrutineering checks done, no doubt, on some of the cars as well. And we do see the MR2s out again later on this afternoon, just before five o'clock for the final round of the championship. And with the overall title already decided, well, uh, who knows what might happen? No holds barred, perhaps, at the, at the front of the order. Although maybe Aaron will be... Well, I don't know. Is he the kind of driver that's going to just take it easy uh, just to keep out of trouble and not pick up any, uh, no. any, any exclusions or anything like that? Well, hopefully he races, because I know yes. some people, when they're in the championship, then think that they don't want to do it anymore. So let's hope he does race this afternoon. I somewhat suspect he probably will, uh, because he, so. he likes winning races, doesn't he, Aaron Cook? It'd be interesting, you mentioned about his past, what his future might hold, because he's shown how quick he is here in the MR2 championship. Whether he's going to stay with MR2s or whether he's going to move on to something mm. else. Perhaps we might hear that uh, uh, down in the pit lane in a moment or two. Yeah, absolutely right. So let's head down to the pit lane now and talk once again with John Ratcliffe. Well, what another fantastic race here at Alton Park, this time in the MR2 Championship. We're going to have a little chat to some of the drivers. We saw some great action out there and a lot of battling up and down the field. We saw near the end there, there was like a group of six or seven going at it. Absolutely mental. But first, we're going to have a little chat to Aaron. Aaron, if I could speak to you quickly, you've won the race and you've now won the championship. How does that feel, mate? Yeah, mega. Um, massive thanks to everyone. Uh, Rogue, uh, it was hard work getting to this meeting, but uh, massive thanks to everyone, everyone that uh, helped us get here. It's been hard work the last couple of weeks, but, but we made it and uh, stuck it on uh, second, won the race. That's a championship, so cheers. Exactly, you should be so happy with it. Can you talk us through the little move that you did on Sean to take P1? Yeah. Um, we had a few. We had a nibble the, the lap before. Um, we 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 was uh, sort of in side by side for sort of felt like half a lap, but probably not. Um, and it, I just couldn't quite get it to stick, so I, di I didn't want to do anything silly. Um, stuck back behind him and just got the run on him really um, out of turn two. Um, went back underneath him, and um, yeah, we actually gave each other thumbs as we went past. Uh, it was it was a great race. Yeah, the respect there was awesome, and the race was brilliant. So thank you for chatting with us, mate, and well done. Right, Congratulations you, on the yes, championship. Thank you, right, let's have a little chat with Sean now as well, Sean. Fantastic race from you there, just pipped to P1, but yeah. still the respect between you guys was fantastic. I do remember seeing you side by side. I think it was from turn one all the way down to the hairpin at the bottom. How was that race for you? To be fair, I think we weren't even looking where we were going. We were sort of almost <laughs> looking at each other. <laughs> I'm waving at him, Aaron's waving back. Um, yeah, he was, he's carrying so much speed through cascades. I just, in, I just couldn't do nothing. I defended it the first time, the second time. I didn't have an answer for it. Yeah, so then enough. I tried to come back a little bit and then I made a few mistakes and then start, thought oh, I'm pulling her back in again. But the same as all year, he hasn't been making mistakes, so I wasn't counting on it. So yeah. like, congratulations. I think that sort of wraps it all up. So Yeah, yeah no, it does. Really yeah, he's yeah. wrapped up the championship now. But yeah, you're on his bumper for absolutely ages. Though. I thought you were going to send another move down at the end, maybe a cheeky one, but didn't quite happen. No, it's not working. No, it's, it's no, my luck. Well, and <laughs> I'll probably take myself out. <laughs> well done, mate. Fantastic race. Yeah. Cheers for that. And we'll also speak to P3 as Cam in P3. Well done, mate. We saw you having a good battle there for, for third. It was sort of third, fourth, fifth, I think, we're battling for a while. You managed to clear them, get ahead and take the podium. How does that feel? Yeah, pretty good. I mean, I, I never had the pace to keep up with these guys. So really, the aim was just to get into P3 and get in a good lap time for the next race. I mean... I got a really good launch off the line, but missed second gear shift. So I had to kind of battle my way back through, but was able to do it. Had a good dice with uh, Peter Higton and uh, Sam Harper for the first couple of laps and then just put in some quality laps for the rest of it. No, you did a really good job, mate, and P3 should be uh, very happy with that. Do you know where you will be for the next race or is that yet to find out? Uh, I'll find out in a minute. Um, I assume it'll probably be P3 again. So hopefully we can get a good launch and uh, maybe keep up with these guys a bit more. Yes, yeah, so try and get the second gear next time and uh, <laughs> see how we can do. I'm sure we'll see you back on the podium next race. But right. cheers for speaking with us. Cheers. Thank you, mate. Again, as I say, what a fantastic race there. Second one of the day. And uh, we've got lots more coming at you. But next up, I'm, of course, going to send it back to the comms booth. Next one we've got is the Alfa Romeo Championship. <laughs> 